Hi everyone, it's uh, Sarah from Domali again. Uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to do something that is much simpler, much quicker than uh, what I usually have. So with carving, it tends to take, uh, it's, carving is pretty time intensive, but this project over here, which are basically just simple uh, hand bangles, uh, they can be done within an hour or two. Yeah. Before I show you the bangles close up, uh, what we're going to need are the, a mallet, your chisels of different sizes, a marker, something to mark out the circumference of your um, bangle, coping saw. Uh, this over here is actually called a bird's mouth jig, and what it does is actually to help me basically elevate the the point at which I'm gonna do co uh, sawing with the coping saw. But I'll show you how to work around that if you don't want to build one of these yourselves. These, these are really simple, they're just pieces of wood uh, joined at an angle, joined in an L, and with a small opening that allows you to move the coping saw in a round. Yeah, yeah. let's get started. Well, here's a close-up of the bangles. That you see that I have two uh, finished with a kind of like a carved outside. Uh, one of them is thinner than the other. I was just experimenting with how thin I can go on the rim with regards to the uh, blanks that I started off with. And this one here, I actually didn't do any carving. It's a sanded finish. Uh, in fact, I didn't sand it as much as I probably could, but I did want to see the uh, difference as quick as I, as I could. With regards to the size, uh, I'm sure there are sizings out there, but uh, because we're not going to be cutting any holes in the sides, so there will be no flex to this mango. And uh, because of that, I tend to use this part of my hand as the guide for uh, the size of the bangle, just because um, that's the uh, that's as wide as your hand's gonna get. So you can see this one here, I've drawn out a completely round bangle shape uh, using the compass. You can use a cup, whatever you, you want. You wanna make sure that the rim itself uh, is at least 0.5. This jig I have here is actually just uh, a way to extend the height at which I can do my uh, sawing with my with my coping saw. So because I want to saw uh, achieve a vertical kind of cutting motion with the coping saw, if the bench is too low to the ground, I'm not going to be able to hit um, certain points. So what I've done is to create this kind of a jig that elevates it. You could basically just put the a bench or stump on, on top of the table and, and achieve the same effect. But uh, yeah, I'll show you how this works. With the coping saw, you definitely want to uh, get a good a uh, bite going before you, you cut into it because if not it has a tendency to kind of jump out. So I'll just show you I'm going to get all four corners on this thing. Uh, I'll try and round it down as much as possible. With your coping saw, um, you want to be quite patient because of the size of the teeth and the, the size of the blade. Right? It's going gonna, it's gonna to take a, a bit of time, especially uh, the thicker the stalk gets. So don't want to rush through it. Or you might break the blade, or you just get it stuck in the wood. You can probably see that this jig gives me quite a lot of agility with, with soil, because I, I don't have to lock the blank down at any point of time. I'm just keeping my, my, the force of my hand and uh, the stability of this, this jig here to support the soil motion. If you don't want to do this, right, uh, you could also just lock it down, and I'll show you how. Over here you can see what I've done is just to lock it into the side of the uh, one of the sides of the stump and I can just use the coping saw here to um, cut around that corner as well. I do not tend to prefer this method just because uh, I have to keep rotating it and it's harder for me to keep it in a straight fashion. You also notice that once I reach a certain um, uh, closeness to the bench, I, 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 it's going to be a bit hard for me to uh, push it forward without scratching my hand on the surface. Which is another reason that I prefer having it elevated. And here we have our roughly round shape. Uh, so you see there are a bit of chunks around here, which you could use the coping saw to try and do a fine cut down, but I prefer to use a chisel just to chop it down. So bevel up. 
So you can clean up the outer surface a little bit like that to uh, make it as round as you can. Next I'll show you how we clear out this center area. Now the goal here is that we want to um, punch a hole through this, this uh, center waist area so that we have um, some form of opening for the saw to cut through later on. And uh, if you have a drill at home, right, that would be the easiest way. Because, but I'm going to show you how to uh, break through the material if you don't have a drill at home which is basically to use the mortise method to cut through uh, to the other side so just chop it down so, uh, now I've got that uh, hole enough for me to put the, the blade of the copying saw through uh, I'll show you quickly how to uh, remove the blade from the copy saw, thread it through this, and then you see that I just loosen up this side. Basically, how you would change the blade on the copy saw. That was a bit of a cheat for me to get within the circle without having to cut um, through the, the band itself. And uh, now I'm just going to use the copy saw the way you, you usually would, try and do the entire circle at one go. At least for clearing out the waste in the, in the center, it's almost it's almost imperative that you use something higher because uh, it's going to be very uh, messy and troublesome for you to keep locking it down and changing the orientation uh, on the bench itself. And now we uh, do the opposite of what we did just now to remove the saw from the sides. Once we have this pretty round bangle shape going, we can start to clean up the insides before we start uh, carving it down to the shape that we want. And uh, I'll just get my smallest chisel and just chop down the more uh, irregular uh, bits that are sticking out on the inside. So make sure to chop down from both sides, about halfway over here, flip it around and meet it on this side. It doesn't have to be like super super clean, but uh, you do want to make it a bit easier for yourself so you don't have to sand so much later on. Here on, uh, I can start carving the way that I usually would, which would be just to start paring it down. Um, Morandi is quite a shiny wood, so I could do quite a nice facet uh, outside for it. Yeah, so same thing, you want to follow the grain. So you wouldn't be able to kind of carve like all 360 degrees around this thing. You understand uh, when you are carving the grain, like how exactly this works. There are a few things you don't want happening. You don't want to put too much pressure against this uh, bangle, so it's, it, it won't risk uh, snapping sideways like that. So when I do uh, carving for the sides, what I tend to do is I support this area. Uh, I make use of the stop block, but I also have a hand support, a uh, finger supporting this this outer rim. So uh, the two ends over here are not the only things keeping this this circle from snapping this side so it's very comfortable for me to carve in this manner but for me to get that side it's going to be a bit tough then I've got this space over here I can just kind of lock it down then same idea just pair it forward So when you're coming, you're going to notice that um, the grain uh, on the outside, uh, working on the grain on the outside is quite different from working on the grain on the inside. So for example, on this outside part, even though it's running, it's running lengthwise, uh, we've been working kind of up the, 
curved this way and on the inside you're actually going to be working in the op opposite direction so just to give you an example if I tried to work this side down following that so what I would have uh, worked down in this direction over here when I do it on the inside I start getting that awful furry tear up so I tend to prefer to use bevel down over here so I can reach that steeper inside curve naturally because it's a bit hard to reach in here you might want to use a smaller chisel bevel down and then just kind of like scrape the material out this way my uh, bangle is now pretty nicely faceted on the outside and uh, before I move on to oiling what I like to do is a uh, round of sanding so I just want to flatten the edges out a bit. I'm using 120 sandpaper here because the wood's not very hard. I do like to sand the insides as well. Um, after you've got it to a roughly round shape, uh, whether it's by chopping down or a bit of scraping, uh, pairing with the chisel, bevel down, you just use uh, sandpaper, y usually I start at 120 and then I smooth it out on the inside, bring it up to 240, basically something that will be So there you have it, our uh, finished products. Um, like I said, it was a really quick and uh, simple project to start with uh, when it comes to carving. And you can definitely do it with any pieces of uh, scrap that you have, as long as it's enough to fit your hand to. Uh, you also don't have to follow a round shape, which I've done with all three of my bangles. Yeah, if you want to try something a bit more irregular, something a bit more rectangular or long, you can also do that. Uh, as for the finishing on the outside, you can try some things like relief carving. I think John has a video on relief carving, which could get you started off on that. Uh, I might want to try that myself. Yeah. If you enjoy this and would like more, uh, short videos like this do let me know uh, other than that please leave a like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video